Hey, what up, Russell Leeds here, and welcome to step four of the winner sales system. So just to very, very quickly recap, the first three steps, uh, it's win, it's an acronym, so W is for one over. So before you can sell anything, you need to be completely one over, 100% believe that your product is amazing. I is for investigate. This is one of the most important parts of a sale, is you need to investigate, find out what it is that the customer wants before you try and sell them your service. Uh, because if you don't know what they want, how can you possibly sell them what they want? And that sales is all about finding a need and fulfilling it. Then you've got N, which is no brainer, which is the pitch part of your presentation. So once you've got a great product, once you know what they want and it fits, you then pitch that product in such a way that it's a no brainer so that they have to say yes. Now, once you've finished your pitch, we're moving on to the next N, which is this week, which is negotiation. I hate to break it to you, but once you finish your, your great pitch, if you don't enter a negotiation right now, if you just stop, most people will not buy. Now, a lot of salespeople, especially people that are new into sales, really find it awkward actually asking for the order. They love spouting and going on, oh, my product does this, my product does that. But when it's time and the, the heat goes up and you've got to actually ask for the order, that's where it starts to get a little bit uncomfortable and that's where you need to excel. This is probably the most important part of the sale right now, asking for the order and how do you do it and when do you do it? And that's what we're gonna be talking about on this video. Okay, so you've just finished doing your no-brainer presentation. There's two things that you need to know before you enter the negotiation stage. Thing number one, does the prospect want or need your product? And thing number two, do they trust you to give it to them? Do they trust you to do what you say you're gonna do? There's a saying in sales, the ABC of sales, always be closing. And to me, it is nonsense. You should not always be closing. Only close, only enter the negotiation once you know the answer is yes to those two things. They want your product or they need your product and they trust you to provide them with that product. So the whole idea of your no-brainer pitch is to be getting them ready to that point only into the negotiation once you've reached that point. You don't want to close early because then they might say no, and then although you can win them back, it makes it much, much harder. So the first one I want to share with you is what we call the assumptive close. Now the name kind of gives it away. Assumptive as in you're going to assume. So you're just going to say something at the very end of your presentation that assumes that you're going to get the order. So one of the ones I say is, how would you like to pay? I'm just assuming you want to pay. How would you like to pay? Or you might say, uh, brilliant, I just need you to sign right here and we can get it delivered to you next week. So you're just assuming that, they, that they're going to sign, just asking them, yeah, how would you like to pay? Or I need, you, I need you to sign right here. Just telling them what you want them to do. Make it as easy for them as possible. It's called the assumptive flows, lots and lots of different things that you can say. But anything that just assumes they want to do business with you, because of course they do, because they just heard your no-brainer of an offer. Uh, number two close that I want to share with you today is called the alternative close. Uh, it's a variation of the assumptive close because you're, you're assuming that they want to take two options, but you're giving them a choice. So rather than just saying, how would you like to pay? You might say, uh, would you like to pay by debit or credit card? So you're asking them, you're giving them a choice, but both choices are yes. Or you might say, would you like to take delivery? Would you like to uh, get that delivered to you on Wednesday or Thursday? Would you like to start this month or next month? So, okay, so it's kind of like the assumptive close, but you're giving them two choices both of which are, yes, I want to buy your products. Because then they've got to, then you put them on the spot and they're thinking, oh, uh, oh, when would I, oh, no, let, me, let me start next month. I'll do next month, rather than thinking the choice is yes and no. You're taking away the no option and just replacing it with another yes. Um, so that's another assumptive close, uh, that's another kind of assumptive close. It's called the alternative close. And the final close I'm going to share with you is called the three yeses close. Uh, so basically how this works is you're going to ask them three questions in a row and get them in the habit of saying yes, and then you ask for the order. When you ask for the order, you could probably do another assumptive close. So you might say, so let's say, uh, let me say I am selling you, oh, what could I say? I could sell, I'm selling you on buying my new book, The Entrepreneur's Blueprint, okay? So I've said, look, you've heard all about the book, The Entrepreneur's Blueprint, let me ask you a question. Do you think that the book, if you read it, will be helpful for your business? Okay, I know they're going to say yes because I've got all these buyer signals I've gone through. Brilliant. And, and can you afford the, the 1099 they're asking on Amazon? Yes, brilliant. How would you like to pay? So you get, you, again, it's similar to the other closes, it's finished, but you warm them up by asking them a few easy questions 
rather than just saying straight away, how would you like to pay? You're asking them some slightly easier questions that you know they're gonna say yes to, just to get them in the habit of saying yes. Now make sure that you've got a few different closes in the bag because more than likely, you're gonna to have to use a few different ones during the sale. So you don't wanna rely on just one close, uh, but have a few different ones in the bag that you can use throughout the sale. Now at this point, most of the time, even when you use the assumptive close, you do everything perfectly, at this point, chances are they're gonna come back with some sort of excuse and try and delay making the decision. So next week, the next step of the winner sales intensive is eliminate excuses, is for E, and we're gonna be looking at how to respond when they, when they come back and hit you with an objection. Oh, I need to speak to my wife. Oh, I need to think about it. Oh, the now's not the right time. When they come back with that, you've got bang it, at the perfect answer to come back and, and how, how you deal with that excuse and what you do, rather than just accepting it and going, oh, okay, no problem, I'll send you an email. So we're gonna be talking about that next week on the Eliminate Excuses part, so please do tune in. Do not forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of the episodes. Hope you found that video useful. If you've got any questions, please do comment below, you're more than happy to help, and I will see you next week.